ultimate survival knife set up. Um, this, what you're staring at right now, is the Max Petition JNS Pocket on Extension, but this is the uh, kind of setup that I have. It's a little bit weird um, because the uh, Max Petition actually, as you can see, has two separate bits, so it was kind of like pick which side so is Bar Burger Knife and Tool Aurora, just standard the setup. The sheath I chose uh, um, was the Sog Seal Pop Elite the Sheath. This is a 50 grip Tillion, um, and like I was saying, the folder. It's just, it allows me to use something and keep my fixed blade sharper, longer, so that's why this is where I, I carry this in all here. the cordage. I'll show you quickly what I carry in here. Um, I carry some gray commercial 550 cord um, and some green. This is actually the same color that this everything is else classic is. I just, compass. Um, I like it, compass, like I said, for um, getting rough bearings and just knowing where you're going. I carry a small piece of chaga in here, and then on these sides, um, I carry the uh, Spyderco double stuff, and um, I just carry the Topps Whistle in here, which Topps Whistle has a little bit of uh, electrical tape on it. And then on the other side, I carry the Exotac Nano Striker, as well as its replacement rod. Um, nice. Hopefully you enjoyed that nice little look back at my very first Ultimate Survival Knife kit or Ultimate Survival Knife in general. Today I decided to, I'm gonna I decided that I'm going to do an update to that USK because I, I as of course in most people's lives of outdoorsmen, you know I've changed. I've got more use on things out in the woods. I found what works, what doesn't work, and so today I'm going to be bringing you guys the updated version of the USK. Now it's same basic principles are here in the fact that I'm still using the SOG Seal Pop Elite Sheath, still using the Max Expedition Janus Pocket Extension, and uh, you know, so those two basic principles are the same, but pretty much everything else is changed. Without any further ado, let's get right in. So now covering the uh, first part, and this part really hasn't changed other than the fact that I no longer really want to carry a folding knife, so I've decided to just fully go over to the multi-tool. So this multi-tool here that we're looking at is the same one as in the first video. It is the Leatherman Surge. And the only reason I haven't changed this is unlike the other main knife and like unlike some of the other pack content, this uh, multi-tool still carried today, every day, uh, has not failed me. It is a very reliable, very robust, and overall very awesome multi-tool. And I really have no complaints with it. So that part has not changed, just like the sheath. Uh, it's a very awesome system. So the next part, and this has changed, uh, is the knife. Now if you guys remember, or as you guys just saw in that last video, my main knife for the Ultimate Survival Knife was the uh, Bark River Knives Aurora. And I don't like that knife anymore and would not recommend it for a survival knife just for the fact that its tip is very fragile. I've broken the tip off that knife and since gotten rid of it. So I don't like the Aurora anymore, but it's not necessarily a bad knife, just not a good survival knife in my opinion. However, the Topps Fieldcraft, on the other hand, is a very, very good survival knife. Very robust, but still reasonably lightweight, uh, very tanky in build. Once again, haven't been able to break this one's tip, and I have tried the same exact things that ended up breaking the Aurora's tip. Uh, I really love this knife overall. The only two downsides I really have to it are the fact that the spine on this is, of course, coated and not very sharp. Uh, other than that, I really don't have anything against the knife, and overall, I've had this knife for... I think around three and a half years and still continues to perform and I still take it out in the woods every day. So now getting to this system uh, of how I carry all this. Now of course this Janus pocket extension, especially in its current form, is a little stuffed. <laughs> so uh, it definitely takes uh, a, or you definitely don't, you can really can't put this on your belt. In fact, the belt hole is this right here. Hope you guys can see that. And uh, that's like right next to this Janus pocket extension. So it would not work at all. So I've made a nice dangler and I'll leave in the link description or in the description below a link to where you can check out how to build your own um, dangler for any knife. 
and that's, that is what this is. This system really does need a dangler because like I said, you have to dangle this, primarily this pocket extension so far away from your you know body so that this isn't like riding and smacking you. So you definitely have to have a dangler. That is pretty much a must for this kit, but in fairness, I like danglers anyways. So aside from that, you'll notice that I have some paracord just overall all around this uh, knife sheath. It's a very easy sheath to add paracord too and I really like uh, the stylistic functions of it. So that's the sheath and the multi-tool and the knife. Uh, now let's get into this actual kit. So the kit, first starting off on the body of it, I have down below here and I think this was something that I even had in the original kit or I'm not sure this is where I carried it but either way I carry just a Streamlight Stylus Pro. It's not the best flashlight in the world but I find especially on this uh, Janus pocket extension in particular it's like this little area was meant for. I mean it's the exact size as the Streamlight Stylus Pro and when you have a good amount of stuff jammed in here it still fits in here reasonably well so it's a nice little channel for a flashlight and once again that adds that extra sea of survivability which is very nice. So another thing I did was that uh, in the original survival kit you'll notice how the survival kit here the Janus was offset. Well that's because I wasn't really thinking that smart and what I did with this one to make it actually sit straight on here is instead of trying to weave it through one of these sides of Molly I just wove it through the place where you put your belt on and off of here in this way and then tensioning it with the Molly straps on the uh, SOG seal pop, I was actually able to get it to be very tight and very firm, but now that the, uh, but now the Janus actually sits right in the middle uh, of this, or rather the sheath sits in the middle of the Janus, because the Janus is bigger. But anyways, now getting into it, I've also added my custom zipper pull here made out of paracord, and it's a little tight, but now we're getting into it. So the first part, and it kind of has to be the first part because it was the last part I had to kind of shove in here, is just a nice mylar blanket. This adds a lot of nice, or this is of course cover, and overall I really loved these little mylar blankets, and I'll try and remember to link them to my Amazon store so you guys can check them out. These are, I believe, the Survive Out doors longer they might be the adventure medical kits so either one I'm, I'll make sure to link this one in particular but this one I, of course I took it out of its packaging wrapped it in a piece of tack cord to make sure that its size stayed really nice and compact and I kind of made it into a nice little roll so that's what that looks like so the next part of this, and you guys can hopefully see there are quite a few C's I think I covered all five C's here um, yeah, except for the container, but I covered, I tried to cover as many seas of survivability as I can, as with all of these survival kits, and this next one is cotton cloth, and this one of course is in the form of a bandana, and that's that. Um, and that kind of clears out the middle of this section. So in case you guys don't know how to how a Janus works, there's like this middle big section and then there's these two smaller pockets off to the side. So that clears out the middle section. Of course, those are both pretty big items. So the next thing is that I decided to throw in some iodine tablets and that is so that I can work with the next piece or another piece I have in here because unfortunately this kit is way too small to carry anything stainless or any type of metal container on here so you pretty much have to use some kind of plastic container and for using plastic containers you need iodine tablets to purify the water. So the next part is once again uh, paracord and I really love paracord overall. This here is a, should be around 15 feet of paracord in a butterfly hitch. Um, nextly, uh, there's a Fox 40 Howler and as I dis uh, discussed in another uh, survival kit going over, uh, Fox 40 Howlers are awesome. Never underrate the Fox 40s. They are overall really awesome whistles and very very lightweight. Of course, they don't have any, you know, balls in them, so there's nothing to get frozen or anything like that. So the next thing that corresponds with the iodine tablets is a nice plastic bag. And once again, plastic bag is going to be pretty important because you need something to catch water in, and that's what the plastic bag here is for. So actually, I do have a container. All five C's covered. <laughs> so the next thing, and this is pretty important because I'm running multiple bladed off, 
objects or things in this kit. And this is the Spyderco Double Stuff. This is one of the most reliable sharpeners I have. And uh, as far as a field sharpener goes, it's a very good field sharpener. Even just in general, it's just an overall awesome field sharpener. So that covers or clears out this uh, the, po the pocket on this side of the pouch, this side of the pouch, and now we're going to this side of the pouch, which makes probably no sense to you guys, but it makes sense to me, so that's all that matters. <laughs> so now onto this side, of course, combustion, and I'm carrying the big uh, Light My Fire uh, Army Ferro Rod. Uh, this kind of was a tie in the fact that I probably should have gone with the Exotac because I don't really have a striker on this, but the this does a really good job, especially the uh, saw blade is a perfect 90 degrees. It's a really good striker, but uh, either way, probably should have gone though with the Exotac, but I still like this uh, Light My Fire. And then since it is winter, I decided to throw a thing of hand warmers in here, a pair of hand warmers in here. Those work really well, love them a lot, and once again, hand warmers are just awesome to have in the cold because the hand warmers being the smallest, you can throw them in your feet, or not feet, but your shoes for being toe warmers, or you can throw them in your pockets for hand warmers, or throw them in your mittens as hand warmers, or throw them uh, in some kind of, uh, what is it, like pockets, chest pockets for body warmers. If you use the pair of them in conjunction, you can throw them uh, in pockets along your body to heat up your body. So really nice and super versatile. So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this nice little look at my ultimate survival knife kit. Uh, there's been certainly some things that have changed with this kit, but for the most part it has kind of stayed the same. Except for the fact that I updated the knife and there are quite a few updates. Overall though, that is my kit for now. That's don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and I'm out.